welcome to another Samutsari Conversations with Mimi and Jarvis, Season 2. So, um, like I said, some of you are very, very new to my podcast. Therefore, I thought it is just appropriate for us to um, get to know you by sharing about us who we are so that the topics that we will be discussing in the future will become more um, relevant to you as well as you um, realize the context why we are discussing those future topics in the show. So in a previous episode, we have talked about the reasons why we left the Philippines to move to another country and, and live here where we are right now. So we've done two countries already. New Zealand and now we are in Australia so um, we want to talk about another exciting topic for today I hope you find this exciting What's the, topic again? the topic is about what we miss and don't miss in our home country which is, in the, <laughs> which is in the Philippines okay so we have a list of things that we miss and don't miss uh, in our home country and, and what probably we have here or don't have here in Australia, that's why we miss it. So, you have introduced one um, type of food which is iconic of the Philippines that we obviously don't have here in Australia. That is... Jollibee! Jollibee. We don't have Jollibee here in Australia. We only have McDonald's. We have um, Hungry Jacks, we have KFC, and most of the Hungry local Jack, Burger, King. Burger King in the Philippines is ah, Hungry okay. Jacks in um, Australia. Uh, there's a restaurant here owned by a Filipino um, family, I think, that tried to sell items a la Jollibee, that tasted like Jollibee. But you know, it's still not Jollibee in its original format. That's why every time we go back to the Philippines, <clears throat> the first stop after the airport is always Jollibee. And of course, there are no top silogs, long silogs that you can readily buy from a store, except if you go to a Filipino restaurant or uh, to a Filipino store that sells Filipino food. Um, so that's one thing that you miss. Taho! Okay. <laughs> There's no taho here in Australia. So what do you do? You make your own taho, okay? From soft tofu, silken tofu. You make your own arnibal, you make your own um, sago, and then you mix it up. But it's still not the same as the authentic taho experience when you buy that from... A vendor, a taho vendor. So what else? SM! Okay, <laughs> so there's no SM here. SM stands for Shoe Mart, okay? So in the Philippines, we know we have a big malling culture. So we have big department stores and obviously big malls. And it's not the same experience here. And it's really cheap in, the, in SM. Unlike here, expensive uh, items. Yes. So the SM equivalent for me here in Australia is Kmart and Big W. And for somewhat cheaper uh, prices, you go to the reject shop. But those are like smaller units that you find in a shopping strip or in a shopping center. It's not like SM is the whole building that has those other stores in it. So that's another go-to place if you don't, um, uh, if you can't find anything, you can find it in SM. So SM, they've got it all. Here, you have to go to specific places to buy uh, different things. But one thing that we have here that doesn't uh, exist in the Philippines is Bunnings. So Bunnings is a big hardware um you know, homeware store. We used to have that, like the. Uh, we have something like Home that. Depot the, Home or... Depot, Wilcon Depot, um, Ace, Ace Hardware. Hardware. Okay, 
handyman. So those are the Philippine equivalent of Bunnings, but Bunnings here is so big. So this is our equivalent of SM in the sense that that's where we go to most of the time to look for the things we need around the house. For example, plants. And you are a DIY person, that's where you go to buy your lumber, your tools, your um, the things you need around the house, electrical, plumbing, etc, etc. Okay, so that SM thing where, where you can do everything from shopping, dining, um, entertainment, you go to the movies, you have areas for kids and even performances. They don't have an SM here. Okay. Divisoria! Okay. <laughs> Obviously, Australia is not the Philippines. They don't have a divisoria where you can buy the cheapest of the cheapest things that you can buy in whatever kind of item it is, whether it's clothing, accessories, shoes, um, homeware, in bulk prices, in wholesale prices. There's nothing like that. So I really miss going to Divisoria as well. Um, and what else aside from Divisoria? Obviously, they don't have the tricycle here. So in, the, in terms of mode of transportation in the Philippines, you have a variety of um, choices from your pedicab to your tricycle to your jeepney to your bus, uh, train. Um, MRT, LRT, and your private vehicles here, you only have the, the trains, your car, um, and the buses. So those are the main... Um, you have too many choices in the Philippines, but they're not all moving because of the traffic. They're not moving. Useless. <laughs> <laughs> but here, um, a car is a necessity. You know, when you don't live in a foreign country, you say, oh, luho lang yung mga kotse na yan. Payabangan lang yung kotse niya. But here, in order for you to get from point A to point B, you either take the bus, you take the train, or you take your own car. Choose your battle. Because if you take the train, the train operates on certain routes only, whether it's metro or, or regional. Um, and if you, where you work doesn't, um, you know, go via any of the public transport routes by train, then your alternative is the bus. The problem is, although the trains are quicker to get you from point A to point B, the buses are more, um, it requires more of your time to plan your trips because buses are operating less frequently compared to the, to the trains. But in order for you to make the quickest trip to where you need to go and remind, let's remind them that Australia is so big. So when you travel, it usually takes you half an hour, one hour, but it's a straight, straight trip. There are less situations of traffic. So taking the car is still the quickest and most convenient way to get around. So in my experience, I also drive a car, but I don't drive as frequently as he does. And I don't drive as far as he does. So I can only get around to the little things that I needed to go to, like the grocery shop, to pick my kids to and from school and work. But he does all of our long distance driving. Next. Okay. Manga! Okay, <laughs> mangoes. You can compare the Philippine mangoes to um, Australian mangoes. Iba pa rin ang lasa ng Philippine mangoes. It's still more juicy, more... A sweet more flavorful compared to the mangoes that they have here but mind you there are also uh, imported mango varieties for example from Thailand from Vietnam from other Asian countries but it is still different when you you eat the mango variety from the Philippines and they don't have dried mangoes here that they produce locally so if you want dried mangoes it can be imported again from Philippines maybe or from another Asian country. Like the Sampalok that, that we eat in the Philippines, they import that from Thailand, I think. Okay? So is there anything else that Ice you cream! Okay, what do you mean by ice cream? So <laughs> Because in Australia, you only got how many flavors? In Australia, Vanilla, yeah, chocolate, vanilla, 
chocolate. No, there are others like you have raspberry, oh, okay. <laughs> cookies and cream, okay. Neapolitan. So that's it. So, but those flavors are flavors that are uh, common here. They don't have the more exotic kind of flavors like the ube, the, the buko pandan, the um, durian, the mango flavor, uh, the cheese flavor, the mocha flavor, the flavors of the ice cream that we have like halo halo flavor, they don't have it here. So they've got some in the Filipino stores. But if you go expensive. to the Filipino stores, yes. But um, if you buy it, it's really really expensive. So if you crave for those items, then obviously you have to source it out through a Filipino store or an Asian store that carry Filipino products. But not all Asian stores carry Filipino products. Okay, so you we've talked about food. Do you want to add anything more for the food? Uh, obviously, the, um, the Australian diet is so different from the Filipino diet. So the Filipino diet always has rice, always has bread, always has ulam. But the Western diet isn't always like that. So there are other types of... Um, carbohydrates that they eat that we don't necessarily know about but you can start um, learning how to eat those because uh, Australia is multicultural so some of the normal food that normal common food that they eat here may have some influences from Italian food from Greek food Mediterranean food for example or even um, Chinese food so um, for example couscous have you eaten couscous? Uh, yeah, Nyok, gnocchi. Have you eaten gnocchi? Okay, so the kebabs, um, the, um, you know, the other uh, um, types of food like falafel. So there are some things here that our palate is not used to eating, so you will have a tendency <coughs> to crave for your Filipino food such as the dugunuguan, the kare-kare, the sinigang. So, if you're gonna ask us what we eat mostly at home, I obviously have more experience uh, cooking, home cooking of Filipino food. So, I'm not really an expert cook, like restaurant style, restaurant quality, but it is food that my family eats every day. Forced to eat. Forced to eat every day. <laughs> but sometimes, if we crave other food, then we buy or eat outside. So we buy takeaway food, we call it takeaway food, or we eat out, dine out um, as a family. So, do you miss the internet in the Philippines? Or do, are you loving the internet connection that we have here? We've got better internet here, but still, there's still room for, impro for improvement. Yeah, why do you say that? Because um, in the Philippines, when we left the Philippines, <coughs> we are still under the dial-up. So you have to physically turn on your modem <coughs> and wait <coughs> till that big sound comes out <laughs> before you can actually make a connection. But now we have we, what we call NBN. So it's supposed to be faster, like how many Mbps? The one that we've got is 100 Mbps. So I'm pretty sure that other countries like maybe Japan or in, in Europe, they have maybe so much faster than, than what we have. But what we have here is a little bit better than um, the Philippines. What about the shows that you watch in the Philippines versus the shows that you watch now? Do you miss any of those? For example, TV Patrol, um, GMA, uh, shows, you know, ABC5 shows, teleseries, and things like that. Not really. Okay, not <laughs> really for him because he is more of a movie person. So, as a movie person, he um, likes more of those action movies that you can watch on Netflix. So, thank goodness for the advent of Netflix, he is satisfied. But I still have a little bit of an interest in watching Tagalog movies, Tagalog shows, so I rely on YouTube to access or Facebook to access those Filipino shows. But it is still different. The, the types of shows that they have here uh, are very different from the 
type of shows that we have in the Philippines so it just takes a while to get used to watching those shows okay the other thing that you have um, to obviously um, think about which we probably forgot is the support network for example in the Philippines your cousins are nearby aunties and uncles are nearby your kapit bahais are really uh, people that you know and you have close associations with but here we've got yayas we've also got yayas when we are in the philippines almost one child has its his or her own yaya uh, but here we have no yaya so we have to slowly learn how to not depend on a yaya um, we have to learn how to live on our own and do everything ourselves and teach the kids to do things on their own as well so uh, why do you think that the yaya culture is not common here and like in the philippines where they say you maybe we have more money now to pay for a yaya but in the philippines we're still struggling but we need the yaya it's, anyway. it's expensive <laughs> <laughs> the minimum wage here is like 19 20 dollars per hour Mm. So, yeah, it's so it's expensive, expensive to pay yayas and number two in order for you to import a yaya you need to treat it like an employee of a, of a company you need to pay for um, all the necessary insurances you need to um, give them the same benefits under Australian law and the benefits that the yayas receive in the Philippines is totally different from from what we have here so um, it's not really financially viable to have a yaya here Un unless that you are super super rich that you can afford to, to bring a yaya overseas what about the style of the housing and the accommodation is there something that you miss in the Philippines that you don't miss anymore or that you think you know it's better in the Philippines compared to here Okay, so he's at a loss. One thing that we learned when we lived in Australia is the concept of open plan, open plan living. So the houses here have a different layout from the houses in the Philippines. So usually when you visit a house in the Philippines, the first room that greets you is commonly your sala or your living lounge. room or your lounge. And then next to that sala or lounge is your kitchen. And then towards the rear of the house, you have your bathrooms and you have your bedrooms. Or maybe the dining, dining hall. Sometimes the, you have a dining hall. Before the kitchen. Before the kitchen. But the layout of the houses here in Australia is reverse. Sometimes you have the bedrooms first. And then the kitchen. And then the kitchen. And, and then, then the, the dining. The dining and the entertaining the living area and the dining is always the to the rear at the back of the property because the idea is you can open up that room to extend to the backyard so the backyard or your porch at the back of the house serves as an additional living or, enter or entertainment space yeah, yeah. so in the philippines your entertainment space can be your um garage okay you convert your garage into uh like a ping pong a place where you can do karaoke or a place where you can do uh, play games ping pong something like that but here all the entertaining stuff <coughs> happens towards the rear so it was quite an adjustment for us when we started looking for a house to live in and eventually when we built our own house uh, we had struggled a little bit to make sense of why the bedrooms are at the front of the are at the front of the um, of the layout. Why, why the layout is is really different? Okay, so I got confused there a little bit because something popped up in my camera. Okay, what about the availability of things that you need? The availability of certain items that you think you need that you thought you you can't find here okay so I can name two uh, I will challenge you okay. to name one first is the um, kudkuran um, <laughs> kudkuran or 
I don't know the, what it's called in English, but it's where you can um, grind or um, is it grind or grate your own coconut. coconut. So in the Philippines, we have that metal, um, metal. structure or teeth that you attach to a banquito and you can um, do that. Uh, you can <laughs> get your fresh coconut um, in that way. Milk, coconut uh, milk. And then you just milk. squeeze it to get your coconut milk. So they don't have that here. And I remember one time you asked mommy and tata to bring that in New Zealand. But I don't know where it is now because we've already moved. So there's there's no kudkuran, okay? Um, the other thing that we didn't have that we tried our best to source out is the tabo, okay? So uh, all Filipinos are aware of what the tabo is. Your, it's your universal tool for your hygiene purposes, for your bathing purposes. You use your tabo to, to take a bath or to wash your, your, your bum. <laughs> Um, and it took us a while before we could find a tabo. We, we had to go to a, an Asian store. And at one point, my parents did buy tabo to bring across um, to New Zealand. So we have tabo at home. But eventually, you will find out where you can um, bring a tabo. So um, that's one thing uh, we were trying to look for that we, we didn't have here. And the other thing is, if you make melon juice, it's the same scraper for the meat so you can get those um what do you call that the strips, uh, the, strips, strips oh. the melon strips and you can make proper melon juice so that's something like a tool that i have here in my kitchen that obviously my loving parents have brought um from philippines to here so those are some of, of the things that i have that i don't I can't maybe find an equivalent here um, or maybe I just don't know where to, to buy it from so anything that we want that is not available here we ask our relatives from the Philippines to bring it so do you have any additional item you think um, you want that um, it is not available here that you have to ask somebody from the Philippines to buy for you the one that I need in my garden the seedling bags because I want to propagate some uh, succulents and other plants, so I need seed seedling bags. Here, you can only buy uh, the pots, the plastic pots, but they're really expensive. Mm. Okay, so the other types of things that we don't have here, which are only found in the Philippines, are your typical Filipino items at home. For example, in our um, dining area, we have the, the beautiful wooden etching or wooden carving of the last supper. supper so it's there and we also have things that remind us of the philippines such as this um Bye. decoration <laughs> of the bahay kubo so those little things that remind <coughs> us of home that you cannot buy it here you can only buy it when you go to the philippines so parol we also have a parol which is not readily available here unless you make your own parol. So if we want a nice looking parol, we will have it, um, you know, we will buy it or have someone buy it for us and, and send it to us here. Um, obviously, there's no tricycle here. There's no pedicab here. Yeah, so those things also we, you cannot find. Uh, and even for school items, at first I was so afraid that my kids will not get the items that they have in the Philippines which you can buy everything from national bookstore here we just source it out from their equivalent of national bookstore but fortunately they don't require as much as when they they did in the Philippines they have big bags in the Philippines with all the books and everything but here most of it is online they use uh, digital devices and um, they don't use a lot of school supplies so that really worked well for us so overall jarvis if you are going to compare the items that you have in the philippines and the items that you have here in australia what's your assessment of of that aspect of us living here and adjusting to a, a, a life outside of our home country we we need what do you get up 
the own the things that we need are here i mean the basic ones so the ones that we've said are not really the basic it's more of like the uh, maybe out of habit we needed those yeah, or so, <laughs> out of want yeah, yeah. so it's not a need yeah it's, but a, it's want. a want okay so there's a difference between need and a want so like what he said everything that we need which will enable us to function every day we have it here but the ones that we want which is extra to what we need are the ones that we really look for but look what we have in the house that we think we need are already complete for example the things that we need in the kitchen that we didn't have before we have it here like the microwave etc etc so i think <coughs> overall you you cannot totally compare what is required here because the way that we live here is different from the way that we lived in the philippines so there are obviously things that we needed there which we don't necessarily have here okay approved <laughs> okay so thank you for listening to us and we hope you enjoyed this topic if you want to add more suggestions of what you want us to talk about please don't hesitate to comment below or send us an email or contact us directly okay if you really want us to talk about the topic other than that we'll keep um, giving you content which will give you more insights about the way we live now in a different country so thank you very much for listening to this episode so once again this is mimi jarvis jarvis my uh, one and only thank you for again um joining me so this has been another edition of some sorry conversations with mimi until the next episode bye, bye.